We're back again with another Formula One weekend in the middle part of this triple header, which moves us on to the Austria Grand Prix, where the big and the small teams will be bringing some upgrades, but they won't be as big as what we saw in Spain. With Austria being a sprint event, and obviously last year McLaren having its huge upgrade on a sprint event, we do have some parts announced by teams that we do know will be bringing them here, but we'll also probably see some upgrades that we didn't expect from teams. It's a very unique track where the rear end is really important, something similar to that of Canada. So maybe the teams that performed well in Canada could perform and exceed expectations, especially if they bring some parts here. If you guys do enjoy my videos and my content, it would be amazing if you guys go ahead and give it a like and subscribe if you're new here. It would mean the world to me and the support has been amazing. But let's get started in the upgrades coming to the Austria GP. For starters, I wanna talk about Williams. James Viles has came out and said that some parts will be coming to the Austria GP as they prepare for their huge upgrade package, which should be coming right after the triple header. This probably means we're gonna see some track specific parts. I expect this from RB as well, who had a terrible weekend and timeout in Spain, but this is only the start of their upgrade packages and they still have to adapt to their new found car. The concept is different on the RB, I do expect them to try and revise some stuff here and try some different setups. Maybe it does perform much better here with the new package because the straight line speeds seem to be much better than what was on their previous concept. So hopefully we can see them up in the running again and Aston Martin to follow. Speaking of Aston Martin, they did upgrade their technical team. They're not gonna have any parts to the car here. They are also preparing and we have confirmation from Alonso that a huge upgrade package, pretty much a B spec is coming to the Hungary GP. They did add the technical director that worked at Ferrari, who is now coming to Aston Martin, and this is gonna play a big part of their 2025 and 2026 season, considering what he's been able to do with the SF24 in the leaps and bounds it took from 2023 to 2024. This should be a great addition, and we have to see what this B-spec car in Hungary does. Dan Fowles has not been the promised man we all thought he would be for Aston. Yes, they had a great start to 2023, but in the same way that Red Bull dominated and Aston was second, it was mainly due to the big teams failing with Mercedes and Ferrari and even McLaren falling back and not having the greatest of starts as the season kind of came together and upgrades started to come. We saw Aston Martin lose that advantage and now they're struggling to keep P5. So a big addition to the technical team is very important. The owner Lauren Stroll and Fernando are also getting very impatient upon these upgrades because the team and Mike Crack himself has stated multiple times that improvements are coming to the car but they aren't actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. They've had four packages ever since the Canada 2023 Grand Prix, and none of those packages have actually brought a significant amount of gain for the team and take multiple GPs to just correlate it to maybe get some performance out of it, but never a step like the McLaren did in Austria or what we just saw in Miami. Even what Mercedes is doing this year, we have yet to see Aston improve upon upgrades during the season. We saw it in 22, but that's the only exception and they were very far behind in that season. As for the big teams and the parts they're bringing, let's talk about Red Bull first. Red Bull brought a upgrade package in Spain. It did perform pretty well, but we will see additional parts here in Austria and it's expected for them to have a huge package in Silverstone. Whether these parts will be track specific or upgrades to add on their additional pieces, we'll have to see. The one big thing I noticed was the cooling system is now different on the car. In Spain, with it being such a hot GP, I expected more cooling gills on that engine cover area, but they were lacking that. They didn't have any, but they improvised the top of that engine cover along with the side pod and vertical inlet to help with the cooling and add more performance. The Red Bull in Austria these last couple years has been pretty strong there. They were very dominant in Spain a couple years ago, but that dominance has gone away. And I do expect teams to jump up here in Austria where the rear part of the car is really important and that's always been Red Bull's strength. It's that rear end and let's see if they can add more to the car. This car seems to have more downforce than the RB19, but it's lacking things that the RB19 was super dominant in. Like the tire wear and overall having a great feeling and balance in the car with it not having as much understeer issues like it has now. So these new improvements coming to the car will be probably something the RB18 and 19 had that the RB20 doesn't have. We have seen them recently testing in Imola, the RB18, to see if they can improve upon this car. Just briefly going over Ferrari, we have no expected parts yet from them. Maybe something gets added on. We do know that this upgrade package that came here in Spain that they have yet to optimize was supposed to be a Silverstone package, part of their big package deal. But they advanced them, brought them here to Spain, 
and most of the parts have came here to Spain that they were supposed to have in Silverstone. There are some parts that are going to be added probably now in Austria and Silverstone, but nothing to the degree they added. They obviously upgraded the Halo, that Cobra aerodynamic piece, and as we can see, the undercut is more profound in the SF24. This car will continue to get upgraded. Obviously, there's much more performance to find in the car, and the setup window probably hasn't been perfect for them. If we go off of race base and how they did in Spain, if they were running towards the top, their pace was pretty much on par with Verstappen and Lando for most of the race, and some of the fighting between the Ferrari boys definitely put them back and made it much harder for them to catch the top, and inevitably, Leclerc wasn't able to catch Russell. Looking at the team that's probably the fastest right now, McLaren is bringing some parts here to Austria. Andrea Stella has already confirmed the team will be bringing parts to each GP. But in Spain, they had nothing. They had a gurney flap on the front wing to help with performance and balance. But the actual car itself did not have an upgrade. There was nothing noted in the upgrade notes. Maybe there were parts added under, as Mercedes likes to say, we're adding something every single GP, regardless whether it's visible or not. But McLaren has noted they will be bringing parts here that should add performance for the car, to solidify them in P1. And while I do think the car is the fastest with the smallest amount of mistakes in it, it seems to be good in the slow, the medium, and the high speed corners. Austria is a track that they brought that huge upgrade package to last year, and it worked right off the start. Same like how it did in Miami. Anytime these guys do it add upgrades, they wait for those big packages usually, instead of those small improvements that do add to the car but don't change the pecking order, McLaren does it the other way around. They wait for the big packages, they add small parts prepping for the big package. So we could see small parts in Austria and maybe a huge package in Silverstone. We just know within the coming races, something is supposed to come to the McLaren car. Last team to look at is Mercedes, who has also said the same statement as McLaren, which is bringing parts to all three GPs. This is confirmed by Total Wolf. The team principals have been in direct talk for these upgrades like your Total Wolf and Andrea Stella, so we should expect it. Now, we didn't see anything on the report for the Spanish GP. There weren't upgrades that were reported from them, but we do know internally and weight-wise, they did reduce the weight, and apparently they were a little overweight to what they needed to be. We know this has been a common problem for all the teams in every single season so far in 22, 23, and 24. We see that with the carbon fiber liveries, but as well as the weird handling through certain corners. The Mercedes car, while it is expected to always be now in the top four and solidified itself, is now fighting with Ferrari and potentially McLaren and Red Bull considering the Spanish GP they had. Lewis was great in the Spanish GP. They're still missing a bit of downforce in those low speed corners. Austria does have those slow speed corners and hard braking zones, but a lot of straights, and the team has improved a lot upon its straight line speed. It's been able to run a low wing. It actually ran a lower wing than most teams in Spain and still performed very well. Let's see if the parts that they add will put them up to now continuously fight. They do say they're still missing about two to three tenths. I think it's probably around a one to two tenth range, depending on track, but this track is similar to Canada, so I would expect a big jump from Mercedes. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think of these teams bringing upgrade parts? Silverstone will have much more information upon these upgrades. Austria, as I said, it's that middle child pretty much. There's three races all in a row. This one kind of gets neglected between these three when it comes to upgrades. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and comment and subscribe. It would mean the world and peace.